Hey guys, how you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having a splendid day. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And in this world, we need to be self-educated because if we're not, then the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And we can see what's going on right now with, uh, you know, MSN are clearly proving that they're just, just a propaganda arm. And the truth is that most of the books we get as well are also are mainly propaganda. So we do need to educate ourselves to find out what the truth is. Read between the lines, do a bit of digging. And today I wanted to have a look at uh, some balloons. And just a... Uh, yeah, just some balloons and airships and a few thoughts I have on that subject. So let's get into it. Alright, and as you can see here on the screen, we have a nice balloon. Uh, this is... 1700s in France, and as you can see, this one was tied down over over a fire that heated it up, and then they let it go and it shot up. Uh, there's, doesn't look like there's anyone on it, so I'm not really sure what the use of that is because it will just sort of go up and then come down again. But there we go. Uh, so have a few pics. We'll just have a quick look at these while they're up. Uh, this is another cool one. These are all 1700s. Most of them happen uh, to be from France for some reason. And as you can see, this one has a cage below it. So there's people in this one, and it looks like it's just been launched from down here. Got the guards around, and this must be some kind of heating device. But what's that? It's got a pointy bit on the top, but it doesn't quite fire. Is that some kind of gas cylinder? Uh, and obviously old, old world buildings. And then these people sitting in a cage up here. And we've got this bit below, which obviously slipped over this. So I don't know really what, what, because where, how does the heat get into the balloon? You know, is this even See, they tell, tell us now that, that balloons and things are made to rise by uh, heating gases in them, like helium, things that are, are lighter than air. No, but back in the day, that wasn't so easy to do. Now we've got, like, you know, gas burners and things. But back in the day, they didn't. Uh, I've, I'll show you some stuff later. Some people, they say, were putting in. So, yeah, uh, look at this light post. Uh, seen any of those lately, guys? We still have these around. This is from the 1700s. Old world buildings, and I'm not sure what's happened here. This one's taken off, and it looks like the basket's broken or something, and it's gone sideways. But look at the amount of people there to watch it. So that's a big balloon. And the other thing about balloons is they're kind of a bit of a silly, you know, invention, aren't they? I mean, they're, they're so impractical. Like, literally, they're just for fun. You just, that's all, all it is. It's just a viewing platform. You can't travel in them because you can't steer them. So you're at the mercy of the wind. So literally, you take off from somewhere, have a nice little flight, hopefully, land, and then you've got to go and pick up all your stuff and take it back to your house. Bit strange. Uh, this one, now, is that the basket? Is that just a... maybe it's just a dot. Okay, this one's still tethered. Uh, down... Just, I don't know, is this guy holding it? It just goes into his head. Uh, look how big this... Uh, what is that, a boulevard, a concourse? This big area here has got all the people on the side. Do these people in the middle... Yeah, right, they are. Do these guys look big? Compared to these guys, and, and I was looking at the people in the stands here. Uh, are they children? Can't really see, but these people are 
definitely bigger, aren't they? You see that? We've got small people here and here and here. And then big people, big people. And I guess these are all big people because, yeah, more small people here. Got some carriages, I think. Wow. And here's another nice balloon. Again, the same kind of takeoff that we saw before. It's just sort of pulled down over a fire to heat it. But this thing... Oh, okay, we do have people here. Okay, ah, so that's pretty cool. See this? The basket actually goes around instead of hanging underneath. That actually makes sense. <laughs> uh, so they let, let it up, but I mean, there's no heating source. So how's this thing going to stay up? And of course, you can't steer it. They look nice, but... It's just really a balloon, you know, it is. It's just a balloon that floats around in the wind. Here, another huge balloon. Of course, in front of a huge old world building. And just look at the ground. Is that just supposed to be grass? There's just not much there. No trees. And I guess this is where it took off from. This guy's got his telescope. And up here, but... I don't think there's anyone in that one. Bit hard to see. Interesting thing on the top of it. Alright, uh, this, yeah, this is cool. Uh, this is a guy who invented a land yacht. And apparently the story says that he, is this in English? It says he actually uh, drove it round. I have read the story. This might be it. Uh, no, it's in French. Uh, the chariot volant of... Prince Morris. Is that Prince Morris? Oh, orange. <laughs> of course, I don't have a problem with the color orange. Uh, if these people want to try and claim a color, I shall resist and say, prove you own that color. So here we go. Look at this uh, little land yacht. How cool is this? So literally... It's, you know, it's a well-made, back in the 1700s, it's a well-made, you know, cart compared to what we see uh, they, as the tech that they had. But they're actually driving it just exactly like it's a, a sailboat. Got the little flag and everything. So pretty cool. So, I mean, what kind of tech did we actually have back in the day? And this is the thing, if this... I mean, obviously this only works with when there's wind, but, you know, why did these things all disappear? Why is everything now have to have an engine? Uh, because engines need fuel, which you need to pay for. Just having a look at all this scrolling. And, yet, and this is another thing, like how far have we regressed? This was just a book, and look at the effort they used to go to for the writing and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you don't see that anymore, really, do you? Here's a pretty cool design. And this is like an air, like an actual airship. The veritable navigator Arian. So the, the navigator of the air. So we've got our balloons here and see we've got sails. So this thing is steerable. So this makes sense. And this is kind of... Uh, the question I'm kind of asking is, you know, was all this stuff different to what we're told? Is it like everything else, like the buildings? Have they stripped off all the good tech so we're just left with these stupid balloons that you just can't steer and you just float around in? Because this, look at this, this is an actual ship by the looks of it. You fit a lot of people in, you've got rudders, oars, sails, uh, so you can steer it. A description, DC Globe. Balloons composed of uh, cantaloupe underviews, blah, blah, blah. Too hard to read for me. Uh, but you can see this is all completely rigged up. I'm not sure what this does. That's probably to lift it up and down. Or actually, there's probably a brake. Okay, that's cool. So they probably lift that up so it's just level when they want to go fast. And then when they want to slow down, they just drop it down and it just holds the air back. And they get pulled forward and they can steer with rudders. They've got these steering wings. So there you go. This is 
you know, the kind of stuff that was around 300 years ago. You know, when people were allowed to do this as well, people were allowed to make inventions and give it a go. Uh, now with all the rules, if you put a balloon up in the air, they come and they would come and put you in jail. You know, so uh, that's why we have no inventors, guys. It's it's, and even if you do invent something, they'll come and if it's any good, they'll come and steal it off you. If you don't sell it to them, they'll steal it off you and kill you. And this is what's been going on. So here's a few more little designs. This one looks, you know, like a one man, but it looks steerable. Just a balloon here. This guy, what's happening here? These cop. Oh my God! Manhandling women. Stealing their balloon. You see, that's why they all got beheaded. These French people. You don't do stuff like that. All right. So. <laughs> Didn't mean to take us uh, this much time going through these photos, but uh, here we go. There's a lot of photos like this now. I mean, obviously this could just be from a fantasy book or something. Who knows? But there's a lot of photos like this. Is that a balloon? Or is it something else that's giving him lift? You know, and is this, you know, it looks like an umbrella, but clearly it's not being used as an umbrella. It's almost more like a parachute for coming down, like. And so all this stuff, you know. The stuff that we have now, see, we've we've devolved. If you, I mean, just look at this guy's clothes. <laughs> right? You know, the, the time and effort and materials that would have had to go into making these clothes are... Uh, is just huge compared with what we get today with our mass made, you know, production line uh, crap basically made by slave labor is what we get now. But they, they used to, everyone pretty much used to dress like this. Of course, they tell us that this was only, you know, the royals and that most people were just in, you know, in the mud. But, you know, with what I've seen in old books, that doesn't seem to be true. Um, I mean, here's a picture heating up a nice balloon and again these guys are workers but look what they're wearing I mean they're not in their fineries because they're working but this is clearly well-made clothes this guy's giving him a little woohoo give me a five on the back side and yeah uh, and, and again what is this is this are they pumping that balloon up see how it comes down onto this pipe We've got all this gassy stuff coming out, but... So what's that mean this is? You know, this is the thing. How are they getting them to fly and stay out? Like, how are they making them practical if they didn't have gas burners? Oh, that's a shot, a coloured shot of the one we saw before. And again, once this goes up, how does it stay up? I mean, look at that. Does it have a little engine inside it? Did, is this just a starter? Look at that. It's actually got... It's like a rocket ship. And uh, I heard... I was watching a video the other day and someone mentioned the movie uh, Baron von Munchausen, is it? And apparently... I haven't seen it, but apparently he goes to the moon in a balloon. So there we go. So... I've actually been meaning to do a video on balloons for a while. But I was watching a video by Berserker Bear. So Berserker Bear, uh, Dustin, he's putting out some good content. So come across, subscribe, like, show him some love because uh, he's doing some good work. But I was watching this video and what he was showing is, yeah, that, that, uh, da, da, da. this, oh, gosh. Get this down okay i just wanted to show like this is an old world building obviously and uh dustin was sort of talking about is it connected to airships now martin has mentioned this in connection with the crystal palaces oh there it is there so we have this door and look at the size of that door now there are train tracks near this place as well there always are under the crystal palaces there's train stations and train tracks, and, and there's much, there's more than one Crystal Palace, guys. They're everywhere. And 
or at least they were. We've still got a few. Yeah, so look at the, the size and the shape of this. Was this for some kind of airship? Because it looks like it's kind of made for something big like that, doesn't it? And, of course, it's next to a building. So uh, the theory is that they dock up the top of the building. Uh, up the top of this thing. And then, th and then they're stored down here, I guess, you know. And then this is where they come in. People get on and off and they cruise off. And, of course, airships would have been... Uh, almost free, depending on, on what they're, they're, you know, what was keeping them afloat. I mean, most of the time for airships, it's just gas, so you don't need to heat it. Uh, and so all you really need is propulsion of some kind. Uh, but as we've seen, you know, some of them had sails, and when you're in the air, there's not not a lot of friction, so you wouldn't need a lot of propulsion to just cruise along. I mean, obviously it's different when you're in a jet and you're doing a thousand kilometers an hour, but people just cruising around in airships uh, it'd be almost for it'd be very very cheap and it'd be very uh, unpolluting as well so that that's the sort of the theory yeah, so I thought I had uh, with the airships you know these these um, and the glass is that obviously these are full of gas and if you keep them in the cold the gas shrinks and so this would deflate. But if it's kept in, in a place that's warm, like something with a glass roof maybe, that keeps the heat in, then it would stay uh, inflated properly. So I don't know, just a thought I had that might be one reason why that there's all the glass, because that's what I couldn't work out. Why, why would the buildings be glass for airships? But that might be a, a theory. They, they definitely look the same shape. Now this is uh, an airship. Okay, a modern airship, Zeppelin. Now, uh, we all remember that name, Zeppelin, from the airship that uh, exploded. And basically, with that event, was it the Hindenburg? Or am I getting that wrong? Um, yeah, it was the Hindenburg disaster. So, it was a Zeppelin, and this... This happened a long, long time ago, right? Here we go. And look, you can see there's a tower there. Was it docked to that tower? Um, big airship. And this thing, we all know this story. So this was just promoted, promoted, promoted to say how dangerous these things were. Look at that photo. That's cool. Uh, look at that, a lighthouse. I mean, here we go. Do, wow, okay. The lighthouse is tying to this too somehow. This is obviously just a rendering. You can see they've got a swastika up here. So this is, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> They're probably getting into ancient technology from Antarctica or something. But um, yeah, good photo or drawing. Yeah, so so was that all a psyop, all this? To say, uh, airships, no, can't use them anymore. Sorry, They're deadly. One blew up. Um, we don't really know the reason why. I don't. I haven't looked into the story why. Uh, whatever it was, it's not well known. You know, it's not put out there. Uh, but yeah, because of this one event, airships stopped getting used. So why is that? And there are pictures of airships uh, up on um, the Empire State Building. So we have these pictures. Okay, airships. Now look at this one. Okay, can you see that? Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Okay, clearly this is tethered to the top of this building. This is a platform. This is a drop bridge and people are walking into the airship from the top of the Empire State Building. So how, how you know, how widespread was this? Is this how they got around? Because... You know, a few people have mentioned, you know, that it looks like there was definitely a full connected, uh, sit, you know, transport system. And it seems to have involved train tracks, canals, and airships. It you know, seemed to be in there. So if you think, if you've got uh, sort of canals, I mean, I think canals will also have, you know, double use or multi-use, but 
if they were sort of getting around, you know, a local area within a city, then you have trains that take you sort of out, to, you know, to wherever, to other cities and airships as well that can take you overseas or a bit further. And another interesting thing about this pick, see how they're walking inside into that? Because what always confused me with these airships was like the size of what's down here. Ah, the size now, of course, Goodyear, Goodyear, you know, <laughs> they sort of stole it, didn't they? So now it's the Goodyear blimps instead of airships. But yeah, it's just this little bit underneath. I always thought that that was it, and this was all a balloon. And I, and I thought that's pretty impractical, you know, to have this massive balloon and what do you fit in here, like 10 or 20 people. But they're clearly walking inside. So what's going on there? It wouldn't it be interesting if we found a photo of one of these things that had windows like in in the bottom bit here? Because for all we know, this is all. I mean, you can actually see a big line here, can't you? It's probably just shadowing, but I don't know. Maybe they walk through and they come down in here, but it doesn't make sense to me that that they're obviously entering this balloon. That's I did not know that. So there you go. <laughs> wow. But yeah, definitely, you know, air balloons, uh, airships, sorry, were tethering to buildings. Here's another one. What? That's not the Empire State. Where's the top of it? What's this? During construction or something, they say. But look, three airships. You know, and, and, you know, talking airships, right? Um... Vanilla Skies, guys. <laughs> Should write a poem. Vanilla Skies, guys. Um, yeah, Vanilla Sky. Oh, my gosh. Hey, look at this. I had not seen this. I knew I had to look into this. Uh, vanilla Skies. Are they, you know, we see so many Vanilla Skies, right? What is the deal there? Was the sky full of airships? But because they don't want us to use them, because they're dangerous, the Hindenburg, they all explode. Got to, you know, pay us money to fly across the world on our polluting airplanes. Have they all been blanked out? Ah, so here we go. This is the top of the Empire State Building. Looks like a Vermada, doesn't it? Clearly, they're going inside this balloon. What does it say here? Passenger gangway. Okay, then they come off and they come down and this, yeah, is I guess they go in and down the building. This is the the airport uh, centering rope. So it just docks on here. Oops. And up, up here you can see they tie the front on and it tethers to this big thing. Now, again, look where it's tethering. So... You know, how are these things powered, guys? How are they powered? Because we've seen this stuff coming out of the top of buildings, right? We know what, what the deal is with these spires. God, this building just keeps changing. Now, now look at it. What? Blimp flirts with mooring mass, the top highest building. So there you go. Um, yeah, so all these spikes and spires at the tops of buildings that are free energy devices. Were these actually powering... Oh my gosh, that's what I want to see. Were these actually powering these machines? Let's have a look at this. Oh yeah, baby. LZ Great Zeppelin. Okay, let's have a look. These, look at that, that's a floor. Uh, it's not the best contrast, this picture. Sorry, I'm going to have to have a look for some more now. Um, got a nice little castle down here. Oh, that's New York. Okay, New York, the castle city. Uh, a bit hard to read. Engine, okay, these are engines, little, little engines, fans. This 
So what it looks like is this might be the buoyant part here and this front bit uh, is used for, I don't know, you know, passengers and cargoes and things like that. Looks like, uh, yeah, navigation. So that's where, you know, that's like the cockpit where the, where the driver sits. And we saw them walking on through the front here and look at this. So even, even if this was all on the top of this was all filled with gas as well, if we just had this one level, you know, like I was saying, I wonder if there's windows in there. But that, that's a lot of space. You can imagine. You've seen the size of these airships. If these, if the bottom of this whole airship was like this, even if it was just one story high, that's a lot of space. You could get a lot of people in there. Wow. Did not. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a question I've had for a long time. Is is yeah? They just seem so impractical. But I mean, there you go. If this is all seating all up here, and you can see us, you can see a line, guys. Look at this line. There you go. So this is a question. Airships. Um. You know, what were they really? And are, are these just all, you know, all these vanilla sky type pictures that we see? Like this. What's going on in the background? Have uh, they blurred all this stuff out? Look at that. An airship terminal on top of Empire State Building. Did you know? Look at that. Alright, so. I was looking at airships. We were here, weren't we? Uh, now, this is actually infogalactic.com. This is not Wikipedia, but as you see, it's very similar. So, again, Dustin from Berserker Bear. Uh, I'll leave the link to his channel below. Uh, yeah, he, he mentioned this on his video, and it's, yeah, any alternative to a Wackypedia I'm into, because, of course, we know about Wackypedia. So, I think what the deal is, is, is it's the same kind of information, but um, it's... It's ra it's run differently because with Wiki, people can just go in and just update stuff, and so you get a lot of um, false information plus a lot of you know propaganda. We've seen it um, with Joe Biden and and Kamala Harris. Literally, they changed their Wikipedia pages, changed all the information in them when that when they got put up for um, candidates. So here we go, Zeppelins. Now here's just a few pictures. few different designs and as you can see in this propeller steering 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 on this one this is that one that we saw that just sort of shoots up and they sit around the outside around the outside around the outside that looks like a hat like someone's grabbed a giant's hat and inflated it uh, obviously yeah lead uh, like a lead, <laughs> lead zeppelin a zeppelin um yeah, with just suspended, I guess, I don't know, that looks like a propeller. I'm not sure what's going on there. But just big balloons. Ah, oh, but there was a really interesting picture down here. And look, here we go, look at all these. Nice vanilla skies, right? What was going around? So this is uh, US Navy airships and balloons, 1931. Look at them all. And yeah, the the... Army and Navy and government still use airships. They just uh, don't really promote it or really let any other people. Yeah, this picture here. Are these again? Do these look like balloons? Do you think? Um, doesn't tell us what these figures are. It's got A, B, C, D, but... Now look at that. Can you see that? See this cross? What is that doing on the top of this if this is a balloon? Right, looks like the holy hand grenade. So, that's the thing. Is this tech? Are these mercury balls? 
Now they're set up like they're balloons, or maybe these are balloons and these ones aren't, because these look to be different, I don't know. No cross on the top of these. These may just be for buoyancy, and these may be some kind of power, because, I mean, with balloons, yeah, hydrogen, you don't need to heat it, but, I mean, you're just floating around, so you need you need propulsion to move forward, really, or else you're just at the mercy of the wind. So this, yeah, is this, is this antiquity? And the, this is the question. Is this... Was this a big tech that was being used by everyone, you know, free, pretty much free travel in the air? Uh, and it was wiped out because they couldn't monetize it. You know, we have the Zeppelin, they blew it up. Oh, look how, look how deadly and dangerous these things are. You've got to get rid of them. And were they actually running off heated air or, you know, the balloons? Because how were they heating the air? And then when you get to Zeppelins, how are they propelling them? How are they giving them movement? And balloons as well. So this is the thing. And here we go, connecting up. This one's the Eiffel Tower. Got a few schematics and pictures here of how they built them. Because what it's looking like to me is this is an old tech. They got, uh, you know, partly lost, I guess. At least lost to the people during... Uh, you know, the 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 invasion war, <laughs> should we call it that? You know, around the sort of 16, 1700s, maybe like 1500s. Um, and so the tech got gone, but obviously the memory and some of the bits were left and some of the plans, and so people found them and started building them again. And then we're told that that was the first time it was actually built because you get these people and they don't just come up with with an idea of a basic balloon thing they start building fleets of these things and they're pretty complex uh designs and it says here early 20th century in july 1900 the lutzschiff zeppelin lz1 made its first flight this led <laughs> This led, L-E-D, Led Zeppelin, <laughs> that's not how you spell that. This led to the most successful airship of all time, the Zeppelins, named after Count von Zeppelin. So Zeppelin was obviously, I didn't know that, uh, was obviously a certain type of airship. Uh, so Count von Zeppelin, who began working on rigid airship designs in the 1890s, uh, and so then it's the same story again, right? Started working on designs in the 1890s, but then what, 20, 30 years later, we had them everywhere, you know, properly, fully, um, you know, designed out, working well, you know, these weren't prototypes or anything like the whole thing. 20, 30 years back in 1900, you know, I mean, it's, where are all the factories, where are all the skilled people, all this kind of stuff, you know, it's, these things just happen too quickly some of the time. Um, Alberto Santos Dumont was a wealthy Brazilian who lived in France and had a passion for flying. He designed 18 balloons and drigables before turning his attention to fixed wing aircraft. On October 19, 1901, he flew his airship number six, a small semi-rigid and detached keel from the Parc St. Cloud to and around the Eiffel Tower and back in under 30 minutes. So there you go. Uh, completely controllable, obviously powered, and he's that's him there flying around the Eiffel Tower. Apparently, I'm not sure I had a look at this photo. I'm not really sure what's going on underneath it. Uh, it looks like it's got some frame hanging down, but that may be... I don't know, it might have a propeller or something, I don't know, there's this funny bit here, but I uh, don't want to scrutinise it too much, but it's interesting that this is the Eiffel Tower, obviously it's got a top with a spike on it and a, and a deck, and we can see another deck here. Uh, so, I mean, you know, what really are these? Charging stations for airships? Uh, so this is this, oops, no it's not, what happened there? Um, okay, I meant to hit this. Alberto Santos Dumont was this guy. Uh, born 1873, died 1932. 
Age 60 and he built a whole lot of stuff here. So someone's drawing of him. Uh, and this has got a bit about him. Balloons and Driggables. So this is uh, his first balloon that he made. And look at this little basket. I mean, gosh, I'd be scared just floating around. Looks like you could fall out pretty easy. Uh, so that was his first one. Literally just a balloon hung to a basket is what they're trying to tell us. And this is the basket. And then by the end, he's building planes. He's building, <laughs> he's building, uh, yeah, aeroplanes. And he starts manufacturing them. So this is, uh, one of his ships, 1903, a piloted airship. As you can see, he's on the bottom. Oh, that must be what was under the other one. Looks like he's, I don't know, at least driving it. He's probably not pedaling it. Steerable. All the stuff back in, uh, 1900. But if we come down a bit further, here we go. This guy was building planes. Uh, so Santos Dumont's final designs were the Demacil monoplanes. These aircraft were used by Dumont for personal transport. The fuselage consisted of three specifically reinforced bamboo booms. And the pilot sat in a seat between the main wheels of a tricycle landing gear. The demisile was controlled in flight by a tail unit that functioned both as an elevator and a rudder and by wind warping. So that's how he got his lift. And yeah, he was he, he started selling them. Um, so it says, started working 1908 out of Clement's uh, Clement Bay, Bayard Company to mass produce the demisile. They planned a production of 100 units but sold only 50. Then they produced more and more. And at the end, Clement Bayard had a license to manufacture Wright engines and the Clement Bayard 40 horsepower design by Pierre Clergett uh, could achieve a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. And so this is it. They were making these things back in, uh, you know, the 1900s before 1910. They could do 120 k's an hour. And that's it. And And basically it says as well, you could... They were pretty cheap, and you could you could actually build them yourself. And what it says down here is uh, it could be constructed in only 15 days, possessing good performance and flying at a speed of more than 100 kilometers an hour. June 10 edition of the Popular Mechanic, sorry, June 1910 edition of Popular Mechanic magazine published drawings of the Demacile and stated, this machine is better than any other which has ever been built. For those who wish to react, uh, for those who wish to reach results with the least possible expense and with a minimum of experimenting, American companies. <laughs> this machine is better than any other which has ever been built. For those who wish to reach results with the least possible expense and minimum of experimenting. And it says that American companies sold the drawings and the parts so that people could build them. But Santos Dumont was so enthusiastic about aviation that he made the drawings available free of charge. So uh, that any thinking man could basically build his own plane alter it, take it forward, and he was hoping it would lead to a new prosperous era for mankind. So he was, and we see this so often, guys. This is the inventor. This is the man with the vision, with the brains. He goes out and does something, creates it, tries to give it to humanity and the world for free. And what happens? The parasites come in, steal all his ideas, put their words all over it, and try and say, no, this is all contract. We all own it now. And they turn it into something that we now have to pay for. And they also put, enact laws so that we can't do this anymore. Like I said, if, you, if you've if you got land and you build a plane and start flying around, they will come and put you in jail. This needs to end. Okay. <laughs> um, and oh, I think that's the same page about Albert. Yeah. So there we go. Like, like yeah. What do you think? Um balloons 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 so just a, a couple more qu quick pics i've got here uh, people flying with umbrellas nice butterfly at the top you know all ornate and again 
Now this could be just, uh, you know, a bit of a spoof um, picture. It could be a fantasy book. We don't know. But it is interesting, isn't it? Are umbrellas actually umbrellas? I mean, look at how this is made. Clearly, it's a bit different. It's much more like a parachute, what he's holding on to. Obviously, it's not an umbrella, but it looks like one and a, and a parachute. Don't know what the butterfly is. She's got one too. I mean, is that representing a motor that gives them lift with wings? I don't know. This guy's got his bag of gold. And this guy's saying, give me your bag of gold. Oh, look, he's got wing shoes. Nice. Ah, is it... Who wears wing shoes? Is, is it Mercury? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, uh, just, yeah, all the all these pictures, all this stuff we've got, you know, it was it something different? You know, were umbrellas and, you know, parasols, were they actually something different? Like I said, uh, this could just be a fantasy book, but it, it's interesting. They got there looking, he's like, he, oh, I've got my eye on you. This one too. Hey, what the hell? How'd you get up there? And see, these are different. These are smaller ones. Still got the butterflies. What's happening there? Is she jumping out the window? What is happening there? Oh, okay, so that's one lady there, I think. This looks very long, and this lady's jumping out the window after her. Pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah, let's go flying. Of course. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just, just, you know, balancing on the top of this pointy dome thing. So, Antiquitech, you know, what, what was really going on? And we've got all these, you know, remnants of the past. And, uh, and again, you know, I talked about the clothes before. Look at the artwork. The artwork that, that was done in the past just for books and things. It's so far superior to what we get today. Now this guy seems to be holding, is that a candle? I'm not sure, oh no, that's in the background. He's holding something, but look, it looks like he's blowing bubbles, basically, you know, with a straw. And they're floating around. I don't know, are they really just bubbles? Is it something else? Down here we have, what is that, a griffin, a phoenix, something? Some weird animal, chimera type animal. And this, you know, this looks like it's from sort of the 15, 1400s, that time period. We've got, oh my gosh, is that a dog man? What is that? Is this a dog? Look at his leg. Okay, what's going on here? This guy's like, he, he, he wants to be holy, so he's just glued a halo to the back of his head. But this, is this like a dog? Long ears? Oh, there's something not right with that guy. He's, he's had someone do bad things to his DNA. Now, which is what um, jabs do too, guys, by the way. They've got RNA in them. But yeah, it looks like, okay, it looks like there's a few chimera type people there. This guy, and look what he's standing on. Like, <laughs> it's just a pole that sort of turns out into, into this viewing platform thing and spider web what's that it's just all these interesting pictures so we really don't know what what went on in the past but so what do you think about balloons vanilla skies look at this what's going on here okay we've got this coming down obviously they're saying they're filling it but uh how what are these Pes pressurized uh, you know, kegs that are pumping air into a pressurized container that is forcing it up to inflate this balloon. Is that what they're trying to say while it's being held down? Because that's that's very techy. <laughs> you know, if you if you're talking about valves and things and and pressure and and holding stuff, uh, you know, it's not really what we were taught about balloons, is it? We're pretty much taught now. Just put a fire under under a bag and it'll, it'll just fly up through the air she'll be right mate 
and this uh, video has gone a bit longer than I th thought it would and so of course Kitty's come to say hello um all right let's have a look what we have here little cherubs with their horns of vibration and frequency uh, a fleur de lis with I don't know badly drawn eagle or something halo and this is an obelisk uh, this is obviously someone branding trying to say they own it but we have these this guy's standing on top of a balloon This one's standing on top of this balloon, which has been shot up from down here. And, I mean, they're all cherubs, or wings. Well, this one doesn't. He's got wings. And these are sort of, he's got a scribe here and a few tools, and this guy's inflating this balloon. I don't know, that's a kind of an interesting picture. I mean, cherubs, right? Fly, flight, uh, cherubs. Symbology for, you know, where they dock airships and refill them. Wings, flight, obelisk. Are they, are they recharging them on obelisks as well? You know, so many questions, but this is a thing, you know, questions, questions are better than answers because if you don't ask the right questions, you cannot get the right answers. And then this is back to the start with this photo. So there you go. A bit of a look in, at uh, yeah, balloons, flight, airships, that kind of stuff. And, and what's really going on? And what's going on with uh, van you know, vanilla skies and all this kind of stuff? And just so you know, uh, today they're calling them aerostats. So air uh, like spaceships, spaceships, <laughs> airships. Uh, yeah, they call them aerostats now, which again they do. They change the names of things so that you don't really hear about them. It's all used, you know, by the governments and military now. Uh, and it's just aerostat means obviously air and stat. Lighter than air, is that right? Something like that. Uh, but yeah, so not a lot of pictures down here. This is obviously, you know, blimps, but the aerostats is what they're called. Uh, it's military. Now, I wonder if we put military. Uh, no, they don't want us to show us the military aerostats. Oh, here we go. Here's a few. So, yeah, this is all military stuff. Same kind of thing. See, tethered down. I mean, is this getting charged? Looks like this one's pregnant. But yeah, so, so, you know, the military are still using these. Obviously, you know, we see these things in the sky, UFOs, you know, is this half of them? And then, of course, you know, we have the old world famous uh, weather balloons, which I think this is one. Oh, that's a drone. Now they're run by drones, of course. But this is the thing, you know, with these, look at them. You know, if you've got people sitting inside and they're floating, they don't take a lot of energy at all. They're not giving off any pollution, you know, depending on the engine you, you're using for thrust. Uh, but as I said before, there's not much friction up there, so you don't, you know, you basically start them and they just keep going until you stop them. So, yeah, cheap, cheap, good, environmentally friendly, clean energy. A good way to get across the earth. So is this another technology that has been taken from us so basically they could monetize it and, and, and steal money from us to travel, but they're keeping it for themselves? That's the question for today. So please leave me a comment below, a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Share this content if you enjoy it. And uh, of course, thank you to everyone who supports this channel and my work. Uh, big thank you to everyone who has been supporting me through Patreon and PayPal and buying merchandise. It definitely, definitely does help and is very much appreciated. And a huge, huge, big thank you hug to Simon and Leanne. And you know who you are and you know why. Uh, 
thank you. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like, definitely I was left speechless. Uh, yeah, so thank you everyone. Uh, and like I said, this channel is shadow banned. So uh, yeah, the more you can share it out there is, it's pretty much the only way that my work is getting out there these days because YouTube, uh, don't really show it to anyone. They don't put it out there. So uh, getting new subscribers is very slow at the moment. So I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for spending some time with me, guys. Have a fantastic day. And to finish off with, I have something pretty special for you. Now, this is a clip. I don't know where it came from. I actually don't know where it is. But when you see this clip, oh my gosh. Uh, this is the world we lost. Um, like I said, I don't know where it came from originally. I got this from Wooden Nichols. Again, go and check out Wooden Nichols' channel. Great channel. You'll definitely enjoy yourself. Give him a like, subscribe, send him some love. I'll leave the link below. And check out this footage. All right, love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.